Hello you beautiful and handsome commanders, I know what you're here for and I'll spare you the intro and let's get right into it. A lot of people have been asking if they should pull or not for this unit and even before this unit is available for testing but after reading her kit, 100% absolutely she is a must pull at least one copy. It has been more than half a year since we last had a cooldown reduction unit on Summer Helm and that was a burst 2 position CDR. The last time we've had burst 1 cooldown reduction release was almost a year with Sakura and Dorothy. This just shows you how rare of a situation this is. And right now, she's the 5th standalone 20 second burst unit that has a cooldown reduction. I know that a lot of people have been struggling to build the 5th team in Solar Raid and she's definitely going to be seeing a lot of action in the near future. Why does cooldown reduction matter? Well, to simplify an explanation, let's just say that in a 3 minute fight, assuming that we can burst every 20 seconds, then that means that we can burst up to 9 bursts. With the burst cooldown reduction, depending on how much they reduce the cooldown and how fast you gain energy for bursting, you could burst every 13 to 15 seconds. Result could vary between 12 to 14 bursts in 3 minutes, but this does provide significant damage increase, especially as majority of the damage come from full bursts. But more than that, let's not just talk about the cooldown role that she fills. Let's talk about just the damage. Because this is what everyone is curious on. For the longest time, our resident grandma has been reigning supreme as the best burst 1 unit in the game without a shadow of a doubt. When Dorothy came out, we thought that she was going to replace Litter as the best burst 1 unit. But after a while, Dorothy kinda ended up getting relegated into team 3. Team 1 being the Tia Naga team where Dorothy could fit in as well, but it's chosen not to due to how much better is Litter at buffing the DPSs. And Dorothy just doesn't work on team 2 with the bunnies because Nor increases the ammo capacity and therefore reduces Dorothy's cooldown reduction performance. Dorothy is unfortunately put down into the last bullet team in team 3 with Privity. And even then, with Eleg, we could see Dorothy shift from the last bullet team into a distributed damage team in the future. Tove came out and then actually dethroned Litter, but just in the shotgun category. That was it. Tove couldn't really do much outside of the shotguns, and to add to that, Tove didn't have a cooldown reduction which did feel a bit restricting for shotguns. But nonetheless, Tove's buffs were still really good for shotguns, so she is there. Litter was still standing strong. One of the youngins might have surpassed her in one aspect, but she's still considered the best overall. Now finally, we have a new challenger. In a way, D could be considered an upgrade, a downgrade, or a side grade from Litter depending on the situation. In some ways, she can be worse, in some ways, she can be better. D's overall performance is most notable when piercing snipers are involved. Comparatively to volume, however, D's definitely better across the board. There's one slight time where volume had performed slightly better than D and that was buffing Modernia, but that's mainly because of how Modernia had an innate critical damage buff, so volume's crit rate buff synergized well with Modernia, but even then, D had a better overall performance on the buffs and she did buff the rest of the team. And when I tested that, D also had the restriction during the time of not having parts to hit, so Modernia didn't get D's core damage buff which is another part of her burst. Regardless, overall in a practical sense, D is still better than volume in majority of the situations even without having pierce shot property. Unfortunately, the restriction for volume is that she kinda does need units that have an innate critical damage buff on their own so that you can make good use of volume's buff. And right now, volume is taking the spot of team 2 with the bunnies because of the limited burst 1 cooldown reduction pool that we have. But because of this, D easily earns the spot of at least team 2, replacing volume. And in some situations, she can be team 1. For example, let's take a look at this situation of using team of Tia, Naga, Scarlet Black Shadow, and Alice. Right now, this is quite possibly the strongest team in terms of boss scenario performance, and normally, we put Litter in this team. But how would the performance change if we put in D? Just a disclaimer, please keep in mind that the following could be different for other people, the main factor being overload, core difference, player skill, amongst other things, and could change the results, but this is just to illustrate that it can make a difference. Another thing is that this boss didn't have parts in it, so we could even see bigger results for D if the boss was different. Against the Firewick boss, putting D in felt good. I mean, did more damage than if Litter was there. Meanwhile, against the Windwick boss, Litter came out on top of D. Um, 
uh, did more damage than the Alice was the bigger contributing factor that skewed the difference against Fire Weak boss, and since D buffs Pierce units more, such as Alice, we see D's effect more and her team did more damage. Meanwhile, on the Wind Weak boss, since we had the main damage contributor as Scarlet, and Scarlet benefited more on having Litter, then Litter was the better option. But nonetheless, the damage difference wasn't too far off from one another. This definitely puts her in the must pull category. Unlike Tove that even though she surpasses Litter in the shotgun category, Tove was unusable on other teams and for many people, it was just not worth considering the niche of the shotgun. D on the other hand, can be used generally in a wide array of teams. Now obviously this is from a perspective of what units are currently out right now, we have no way of knowing if Shipup plans to power creep them more in the future. Looking at the trend though, they are looking to start putting units that outperform standard units via specializing the niche conditions, kind of like Eleg for distributed damage or Tove for shotgun, etc. But nonetheless, this makes D one of the top units right now to perform on boss situations like Union Raid and Solo Raid. In campaign, she could actually fit in as well to replace Litter for some sniper team comps. With her cooldown not needing to ramp up like Litter, D could execute a second full burst faster and could help with some situations in campaign. Red Dirt is still one of the better options as the burst one for campaign pushing at late game players as hard mode, but this does at least open up your options. Red Hood is still one of the better options as the burst one for campaign pushing for late game players in hard mode, but this is at least going to open up your options. For those who don't have litter, you definitely should get D. Before we go talking about D skills, let's have a brief math lesson in class and review. This is important in understanding what makes D good and where D fits in nicely. In teams, I mean. First, let's review about multipliers in basic math. Let's say that I have this formula right here. 1 plus buff type A percent multiplied by 1 plus buff type B percent. Now let's give a situation here where I have two 50% worth of buffs that I could give around. If say I give both 50% into buff type A and none to B, I will end up with a value of 2 at the end. Meanwhile, if say I give 50% into buff type A and then 50% into buff type B, I will end up with a value of 2.25 at the end. We could do even something like this where 50% goes into A and only 40% goes into B and we lose 10% nowhere and we would actually end up with 2.1 at the end. Higher value than if we put 100% on one side but this time we only had 90% total worth of buffs. Now this shows how having multiple different types of buff is beneficial to us. Having too much of one thing could end up resulting in less overall damage. Now let's talk about the Nikkei's damage formula. In the formula, there's the final damage that's calculated after multiplying base damage, major modifiers, element, charge damage, damage up, and damage taken debuff. The most common buff right now is attack buff, and note that this is one where it's spelled as ATK. The attack buff specifically is calculated into the base damage formula. Litter's buff goes here, but it's not just her buff. Keep in mind that the DPS themselves have their own buffs as well. Red Hood, for example, when she uses her own burst 3, also gives attack buff to herself via her skill 2. This base damage category does get very diluted when you start including the DPS's own buffs as well, because the attack is the most common buff. Now moving on to these skills and looking back at the damage formula, you can see where I'm going here. The pierce damage from her skill 1 and the attack damage from her skill 2 are additive to one another and they are categorized in the damage up category. Meanwhile, her burst buff itself has a core damage buff and attack buff, two different categories as well. D affecting the different categories on the damage formula makes it such that even though the numbers that she provides seem small, because of them being in different multipliers and different categories, the numbers do come out really good. This does make her flexible into different teams as well because of it. Now moving on to some things about her skill. For her skill 1, this is primarily a buff for snipers with pierce effect on their attack. Specifically, aside from herself, we have Red Hood, we have Alice, we have Maxwell's Burst, Haran, Nihilister. So if you don't have these units or other units in the future that have pierce effect, upgrading skill 1 is kind of fairly useless. Now for her skill 2, this is where her burst cooldown reduction is. And this is one of the main reasons why to use her. Overall, in terms of priority, you should definitely max this out. 
On top of it, this does have additional attack damage buff that benefits all units. For her burst, I'll let this clip play out from my stream just to kind of illustrate. Okay, now for her burst, it's quite a lengthy skill but it's basically two different buffs with different conditions. Once you cast your burst, you don't really have the buffs immediately. You have this buff that hits parts and then hit the body. You don't have them immediately, but it will only take effect once you hit the specified parts. There's like the targets that show on the boss. If you hit a part, you will gain the buff for the part, which is the damage when dealt when attacking the core. You get this additional damage. However, you don't get the attack percentage buff. Only when you start hitting the boss, then you also get the attack buff. And as you can see here, there's like a huge gap in the timing. There's like 6 seconds left on the core buff and then the attack buff, there's like 10 seconds left. And that's because I hit them at different times. So these two are separate buffs with separate timers. You'll just have to adjust and make sure to move your mouse and target the body and the part at least once at the start of when you start bursting. So that you can make sure that you have buffs at the same time during full burst. This may mean, for example, that you might have to hit the part first just so that you can get the core damage buff and then start attacking the core. This also might change how you play depending on the boss. For example, if the boss does not respawn their parts, then it might be worth keeping the part alive as long as possible and then shooting the core. Just something to keep in mind. It's going to vary on situation to situation. Now we know how D works, let's move on to her build. In terms of skills, due to how each skill do increase your team's overall damage, she is an eventually 10-10-10 unit. However, if we have to give priority or exceptions, then we can at least prioritize skill 2 to be level 10. There were times when I could see milliseconds of cooldown if skill 2 was on a lower level, but did find that the time just fits nicely with level 10. Getting the skill 2 max out could get you an extra full burst by the end of the run. For skill 1, although one of the main reasons why she's good is she buffs pierce damage for snipers, she can still be used to buff other units even without pierce. And we could see her in teams with mixed units like snipers and machine guns together. In that situation, you can put skill 1 on a lesser priority. However, I do want to say though that if you do plan on using her with either Red Hood or Alice, this is highly advised to put importance on the skill. For burst, I would at least aim for this to be at least level 4 on budget, but as since we could see a lot of use for her in the future, getting it to at least 7 or 10 would even get your mileage worked. Since in some situations that core damage buff might not even trigger on some bosses though, and the fact that attack multiplier is so low and also it's based on cast attack its overall effect could be on the lower end especially if you have less copy of her and lots of copy on your main dps where there is a bigger gap on their base attack but regardless each of the skills are good offensively and basically the higher the better in terms of cubes i would go with resilience she needs a consistent throughput of attack in order to activate her cooldown reduction and sometimes if the boss jumps, it can be used as a time to reload since the AI cancels their aim and resilience could allow them to reload just in time before the AI tries to shoot again. In terms of overload, I would aim at least 1 max ammo so that you can get 8 ammo in a full ammo capacity which is the number of hits required so that she get her burst cooldown reduction. This allows her to only reload once to get the cooldown reduction effect. You would think that it would stop there but there's actually additional ammo goals that we can aim for. Having a second or third ammo line can actually allow you some nice breakpoints. When you have 14 max ammo with the level 10 noir skill too, your ammo reload on a full burst can refill 8 ammo. With 15 max ammo, you only need level 9 noir skill 2 to reload 8 ammo. This allows you to guarantee that you have enough ammo to do 8 full charge which you finishes by the time around full burst ends. You can then also fast charge after shooting 8 full charges. This is especially useful because having an extra ammo line allow you to set her up as a solo fast charger in the team. It might seem counterintuitive right now because since if we're using her on units like Alice or Red Hood, then you could just use those units as the fast charger. But looking at it on future units, 
They seem to constantly be designing units with full charge condition like Scarlet Black Shadow and even more recently, D herself. If the DPS sniper ends up relying on full charge to get their full DPS capability, then you'd probably want to avoid fast charging on those DPS units. This is not just a noir tech, with more ammo, you could also choose to fast charge up until you have 8 ammo left and then once full burst started, you could full charge for 8 ammo and then reload and then fast charge again until 8 ammo left and then keep repeating. Now this reasoning could change in the future as they did announce in the dev notes that they would plan to adjust the energy gain for snipers and rocket launchers. But they also mentioned about how manual is still rewarded so I imagine there's still advantages to fast charging. However, since we don't fully know the updated details of that, this is more of an err on the cautious side. Regardless of that, I would still say aim for at least one max ammo and then two is a good stopping point. Aim for something around 14 ammo. I did find that advantage of being able to use her as the sole fast charger in that kind of situation where she had two max ammo lines. For charge speed, more is for more consistency so that she cancels shots less if the boss decides to jump. But it's not like all bosses jump that much often and I did find it okay even without charge speed. It's not a huge requirement but it's also just a good quality of life thing. I would not try to put it as a priority in terms of re-rolling this line. After that is just the usual attack elemental damage. Her personal damage is not the biggest so it's not as big of an emphasis. Everything else is a bonus. Now let's move on to teams. We pretty much established that D is pretty good and versatile buffer that pretty much works on any team. Due to her skill 1 buff, it may seem like she's primarily used for teams with sniper rifles with Pierce. In particular, Red Hood, Alice, Maxwell are the ones that are in meta right now and could utilize her really well. While Haran and Nihilus are also units that could benefit with her, their usage pales in comparatively to the other three. However, even with that, I could actually say that she also works on teams that also doesn't use piercing sniper rifles. Also talk about how the teams would end up rearranging due to her existence in Solar Raid and Union Raid. In one of my earlier examples, I talked about how D could also be in the Tianaga team. Her placement will be completely dependent on the bosses and she's basically interchangeable with litter depending on the team you plan to use. That's just the general rule of thumb and of course there's going to be a minute differences in practicality depending on the raid situation. For example, if we want to have fire advantage, in positions she could take advantage of is either Tia, D, Naga, Scarlet Black Shadow, and Alice, or D, Blank, Alice, Noir, Modernia. The decision on Alice's position depends if you plan to use Scarlet Black Shadow or not in the raid set. If we're talking about high DPS, Tia Naga is the main option. Keep in mind that in terms of solar situation, the combinations are not as straightforward since it's all about balancing your DPS across the board with the support. In the situation of not using duos, you could even look something like this. If you're looking for width advantage, however, then you might consider litter in the Tia Naga or D in the Bunny team. The Bunny team is something to consider if your Blanca Noir has a good amount of elemental damage rolls on their overload and you want to use another team in the Tia Naga. Switching into Iron Advantage, this is where a lot more openings happen. If there's somehow a time where you could use two Iron teams, this is one of the better combinations you could end up using. Taking advantage of Red Hood, you can actually put Alice with her and then put Maxwell along with Snow White in a later novel team. I've said this many times in the stream and this is one of the best Snow White teams out there but due to how Litter and Maxwell are taken away constantly, this team kind of faded away and the only time it can get a resurgence if we get another good burst one buffer. As a side note, if you don't have around two lines of charge speed on Snow White, you might have to release your Snow White burst earlier in order to catch Litter's buff consistently. It is doable with just one line of charge speed but it's risky and inconsistent. Please also note to know how to fast cast your burst so that there's less time gap between litter's buff and the start of your snow white burst. Moving on to electric advantage, this is where some interesting things happen. One of the flaws in electric shotgun team with summer knees when using litter is that litter increases ammo. Meanwhile volume is typically taking up the bunny slot as well before. With D appearing, allowing more flexibility in the burst 1 slot, we can start exploring more team combinations. 
and I would even say that Tove is actually replaceable with either Volume or D. For water advantage, there isn't a solid option right now other than Winter Ludmilla and Dorothy, which is also a burst one, so the options are kind of fairly limited. However, here are some themes that you could look into entertaining. With Ludmilla, she could also be together or replaced with Brid, but not many people are willing to invest on Brid as she requires plenty of investment to be just even viable as a water dps option that is kind of getting a lot of elemental damage rolls also to even start considering her for union raid we could end up prioritizing elements in this manner depending on what weaknesses the bosses have and what bosses you're planning to hit you could be shuffling the supports and dps around it also depends which one you want to put as your strongest element to hit on for example if i want my strongest to be the wind weak boss then i would put my scarlet black shadow and alice into the tia naga in a solo raid, the distribution of teams could look like this. Now obviously these are just examples and it's going to actually vary each raid depending on which boss mechanics and requirements, but you get the idea of the team comps these build on. As you can imagine, these appearance does shake up the team building around and it'll vary on which units or boss elements you want to prioritize. D is definitely a must have unit given the current units that we have out right now. I do foresee her usage a lot in the near future unless Shift Up decides to release more broken Burst 1 units. So in that regards, you could definitely get your mileage for more dupes of her. Now is it a must? Absolutely not. For any unit, I still firmly believe that you are fine with not having duplicates and especially for a support. On the plus side here, at least her buff that affects based on her attack isn't too big. For competitive people, getting duplicates of her will definitely be something to consider. With these addition, we can somewhat see what Trend Shift Up is trying to do. They're trying to put in more slight specialization. We could see it already on Eleg on distributed damage, Leona with pellets, Tove on shotguns, and D on these knots. I mean piercing snipers. We can expect more units to come that have these kind of special, slight, small specializations. So, what do you guys think? What are your thoughts on D? If you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and click that subscribe button, like that video. How many pulls did it take for you to get D? Did you get duplicates on her? Did you still choose to not get her after all of this? Why is that? I'd like to hear all your thoughts about this unit. But in any case, come hang out with us at Twitch. I go live 5 to 7 times a week and we hang out and talk about games, anime, other things. And I play all the new gacha games, JRPGs, hoping for the next big MMO soon. There are so many more things I talk about on stream that I can't get the chance to upload on YouTube. And it's just very fun talking about all of these games that I enjoy. Well, that's about it for me for now and I'll see you guys next time.